I think it's fair to say there's a lot of approaches that you can take to meet the uh, Army Corps requirement for air barrier testing. And based on our experience, we find that uh, testing alone is not enough because if you do testing at the back end of the uh, project and it doesn't meet it, then, then you're stuck with a lot of repair costs. And it's not sealed over this point. This is the critical point to seal right here over this plate. Our start in this work was catch up working with a number of contractors that had already completed or substantially completed their buildings. Of the first nine buildings that we tested, eight of them failed. The uh, deficiencies come from the fact that the blue skin that you see right here um, was not, in this case here, even adhered to the right location. And so what they ended up doing is doing some retrofit work, and because the buildings were pretty much drywalled and finished, there wasn't a whole lot that they could do. The risk is that you install it per the architect's plans, but you still fail the air leakage test because maybe the plans weren't specified enough. Well, the required test is a, is a test that's performed when the building is substantially completed so that all of the elements of the envelope the doors, the windows, uh, duct penetrations, and so forth are permanently installed. And a test is run under a specific ASTM uh, guideline. And the requirement is, is that the envelope has no more leakage than 0.25 CFM per square foot of envelope area. Most architects aren't really aware of this new specification. And even if they are, they don't really know what it is they need to do to create a continuous air barrier through their building. So you're basically building the building the way it was designed, but it may not have been designed to meet the Army Corps air leakage target. We hear stories about other builders or other buildings where they've gone as far as having to take the brick cladding off the outside of the building in order to repair an air barrier that uh, has failed the test at the end. I think that sets us apart from what we see other contractors doing, which is just focusing on the testing, which is really the easy part consulting, getting that together, making sure that you're going to pass a test up front, uh, we find works a lot better. So that's an extra cost outside the specifications, but it helps ensure the general contractor meets what he's supposed to. The risk with going with low bid is the same as it is for any time you go with a low bid. Um, you know, you're guessing that it's going to work, and, and we like to be sure it's going to work. At SEM, we've taken on a holistic approach to this uh, service uh, field. We start with a design review. Um, we do a careful review of design uh, documentation and the specifications, um, and that completes the first task. And then after that, then we go into construction quality control. You can spend a lot of time and a lot of money um, trying to fix things that aren't that big of an issue in terms of the air barrier, and we try and provide the guidance to avoid those as much as possible and come up with a simple, easy, cost-effective solution. We brought two blower doors. Uh, we only needed one, and we only needed half speed to get up to uh, about 15 or 20 pascals of pressure. We're helping you ensure that you're going to meet the specifications and your buildings are designed properly. There are a lot of qualified testers out there in the marketplace right now that can do good air barrier testing. Um, the consulting, again, is key to get that right, make sure that when testing comes, it's actually going to work.